um, there was an examination in graduate school where I was required to find three subjects in which to prepare a proposal for research. I had to find out what the background was and I had to say this is what I would like to do. And one of my three proposals was to work in critical phenomena. And I had completely forgotten that that really prepared me for the spinodal. At the time, I didn't know the word spinodal, but it is intimately connected with critical phenomena. Uh, I did not set out, I set out on different paths and much to my surprise the answers I found there solved pro other problems. And of course uh, there was even serendipity in my becoming a scientist because I was bored in school and I just wanted to have an interesting school and it was serendipity that I found out about a technical school. Uh, I had no intention of becoming a scientist but I just wanted an interesting experience in high school. So. Uh, that, that, that was a surprise. I, I was totally unprepared even to think about a career in science. And I went to this high school and I found to my amazement how interesting science is, still is. Scientists are wonderful. You cooperate with people all over the world. There is uh, tremendous interchange, generous interchange. People give you ideas. People take ideas from you and use them. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful worldwide community. You have to learn how to teach yourself because when you are in a science which is rapidly advancing, um, you have to teach yourself all the new things. And sometimes the professors haven't taught themselves, so you can't go to the professors. Uh, so teaching yourself was one of the things that uh, it's another serendipity. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, when you enter a new field, you become the teacher. You, 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 there's nobody who can teach you. You have to teach all the people who, who enter that field. And if they are good, they can teach themselves. Newton had the apple, apple fall on his head and suddenly he realized that, that there was gravity and then he found out that it was an elliptical orbit and he said, oh my gosh, that must be an inverse square attraction law. He found that gravity is proportional to the... Uh, the the square of the distance, the reciprocal of the square of the distance. That's the law that he found that suddenly fell into place. Uh, uh, when you look at what's happening in material science to materials, how they change, what structures they take on, uh, to me, it often looks like 
I am looking at the solution to an equation. Nature has, for reasons that, I've ne that I can only appreciate, obeys mathematical laws, but we don't know what they are. Uh, we now have many more, more complicated uh, observations, and some of these observations are thousands of years old. And, um, and they are often so regular and so reproducible and so geometrical that you just wonder what equation gave this as a solution. And so the equation becomes the model rather than something that you stick together. Uh, so you begin with an idea, and if the idea is consistent with whatever, what, with all that you observe, and you can make predictions with it, and the predictions turn out to be true, after a while it becomes generally accepted. And then you teach it to students, and they work with it. I've often told my students, trust what I teach you. Some of it is going to be wrong. But this is what we now believe. And if, you, if it fails you, then you've made a discovery that says we have to change the paradigm, we have to change the law. That's a much bigger thing. But in the meantime, just trust it. And, um, and you can do a lot of things with that. Uh, and then, you know, if it's an opportunity when it fails. You may not like it because it means that whatever you've been taught is inadequate. You have to figure out something new, but it's an opportunity to do some really interesting science.